progress has been made, but you got to keep on working. Slack up. Can't find the illusion that we have made it. No, let me tell you something. You got to keep on working. I read two to three books a week. Why? I don't have a college education. I have to keep on working. I've learned over in the last 28 years, earned over $55 million doing what I do. I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you, you have greatness within you. Had no idea that I could do it. People say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to find out for themselves. <laughs> you want to stay focused on you. What are you going to do? Don't wait for the economic rebound. Drive the economy. Don't wait for it. Don't be a volunteer victim. You want to be a thermostat, not a thermometer. Most people are thermometers. They're talking about how bad things are. They're listening to the news. They're reading the newspaper, and they're overwhelmed with negative information. Negative information is more powerful than positive information. MIT did a study. If I say to you, Tim, you can't do that, someone else has to come along and say, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it, 17 times to neutralize at one time. So this is a time that we want to be concerned, but not consumed with negative, toxic information. We don't want to be carriers of that. People ask you, how are you doing? Said, I'm doing better than good and better than most. Even when my PSA was over 200, they said, how are you doing? I'm doing better than good and better than most. See, when things happen to you, they can make you bitter or they can make you better. We must be hopeful. One of my, my heroes said in life, you know, you always be faced with challenges, and you have to deal with it. Rico Franca said, you know, you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. Why are you here? What drives you? What caused you to show up? Benjamin Disraeli, at a time when Jews were not allowed out after 10 o'clock at night, became head of a country, and they asked him, how'd you get here? And he says, nothing can resist, resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good. Think about it. Be the change you want to see in the world. As we begin to look into the future, and right now, and we're called to do more. We are called right now. There's a higher calling. We are still here. Those of us that are here, we've lived in two centuries, and we've witnessed something no one even thought of. But the fact that we couldn't think of it and see it didn't matter. My favorite book says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Know as in the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. There are things in you that you haven't given birth to yet. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. He said, you got to be hungry. When you're hungry, you'll fight against all of the challenges that you're facing every day. Hunger is a commitment and the willingness to go from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. I was hungry. That's what you've got to do. The people that create a brighter day for us and will create all the brighter days for tomorrow, the people that are going to overcome adversity and reverse things economically and mentally for our country, people that are hungry for a difference. There's a difference between being volunteer victims and being in charge of your life and being the architect of your future because they understand that we are the beneficiaries of the past, the trustees of the present, and the architects of the future. When you're hungry, you don't have time to focus on what's wrong. You're always working on creating something that's right. There's never been a statue erected to a critic. When you're hungry, you are co consumed with working positively, moving in the direction of where you want to go. Hold yourself to a high standard. What industry are you looking at? What position are you looking at? What goal do you have? Hold yourself to a high standard. You've got something unique in you. You are different. All of us are born unique, but most people die copies. One great American said, I choose not to be a common man. It's my right to be uncommon if I can. I seek opportunity, not security. I do not wish to be a kept citizen, humbled and dull by having the state look after me. I want to take the calculated risk to dream and to build, to fail and to succeed. I refuse to live from hand to mouth. I prefer the challenges of life to the guaranteed existence, the thrill of fulfillment to the still calm of utopia. I will never cow before any master, nor bend to any threat. It's my heritage to stand erect, proud and unafraid to face the world boldly and say, this I have done. That's what diversity means. That's what the American dream means, an unstoppable spirit to make your mark. Now, part of the reason that I can talk to you the way I do about living life at a higher level is because of the fact that laughter is very important. I study psychoneuroimmunology and now I'm cancer free, I'm debt free, and I'm drama free. And part of my healing process is laughter, laughter. They, they did a study, you know, one minute of anger weakens your immune system for four to five hours. One minute of anger. 
weakens it for four to five hours. One minute of laughter strengthens your immune system for over 24 hours. Now when I get through, you're not gonna get sick for 10 years. <laughs> So you gotta be active. You wanna actively pursue your dream. You wanna actively in upgrade your knowledge and your skills. Go back and, and, and increase your, 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 your base of, of your capacity to do more. They don't pay you by the hour, they pay you for the value you bring to the hour. What is it you need to learn? What is it you need to do? How is it you need to begin to upgrade yourself? Your dream is necessary. It's you. George Bernard Shaw said the people that make in this life look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they create them. It's hard, easy, it's not an option, but it's worth it. And when you find out what will make it worth it for you, then your life creates some momentum and it's done. Stick a fork in it. As you continue to connect people and tell your story and create new communities and enrich and empower each other, it says simply this, if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it. If all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold, poverty, famish, or gold, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want. If dogged and grim, you besiege and beset it with the help of God. Helen Keller says, when one door closes, another door opens. But most of us spend so much time talking about that closed door, we don't see the open door. And who is it that's like-hearted, like-minded, similar values, that's on the move, that's going someplace, that want to do something with their lives? And, and, and if you feel comfortable, and you interview them to qualify them, because you don't want everybody in your life. There are two types of relationships. There are nourishing relationships and toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships, they hold you accountable, they challenge you, they push you, they make you stretch. Toxic relationships drain you. So now you have to create yourself around those things that you love to do. You were not born to work for a living, but to live your making. What do you love to do? And then find people who are doing that as well that you can learn from, and then create a strategy and a game plan to move you in the direction of that. See, the, the reason that people aren't living the dream is not because they don't have the information. The reason, the reason they're not doing it is because they have made the commitment. Everything we do for ourselves has been said. We take to our graves, but those things that we do for others, we leave behind. What will you leave behind? What will your mark be? What will be different? But there's an old saying, wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. I didn't do due diligence. I didn't read the fine print. I'm not telling you this story as a victim. I'm telling you this story just about the fact that stories do connect us. And as we begin to reflect on this time, we all have stories, but the stories we have and what brings us together are different. So you wanna associate with people that you can learn from, people that you can grow from. That's what the dream is about. In order to make the dream become reality, you gotta look at your relationships and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? Barack Obama didn't win the election by himself. He had some strategic relationships with people that knew how to work the internet that Time Magazine said, in 2007 was the person of the year and how to earn over a mi how to raise a million dollars a day oh you don't do this by yourself you know to live your dream you've got to ask the question who should i count on and who should i count out everybody don't want something more everybody don't have a dream that they want to go after so you want to be mindful of your relationships. Why? Because people rub off on you. Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. I like the book, but I love his audio. As he talks about relationships, he said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. Either you adjust to their pace, or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? You want to be connected. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough out of Atlanta said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. <laughs> if you don't, you won't live your dream. You'll be living a nightmare. It's very important. I want you to think about your dream. I want you to think about dreams. And dreams are always things that we want to do to make things better. I want you to think about some personal dream that you have. Mine was to buy my mother home. 
to take care of my mother. That's my first personal dream. Where have you been with your life? And as you look at your life and as we honor the dreamer and look into the future, and you've got dreams and possibilities and hopes and ideas in you. Where are you going with that? What are you going to do? What will happen when you leave here? What's that personal dream of yours? What's some professional goal and dream you have? You have something special. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. 